Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class, where today I want to tell you about some super recent mathematical discoveries that have been found about shapes. In fact, I was already planning on making an episode about a discovery that was published a few months ago about a shape often called the Einstein tile, although that's not named after the human Einstein. The word root there is one stone, which is basically referring to the monotile part of its more technical name, that this shape was something Thing called an aperiodic monotile that was discovered. However, if you look closely at the paper published a few months ago, the aperiodic monotile they found then had some limits and some traits that it didn't have that an aperiodic monotile theoretically could have had, implying that maybe someday a better, more improved aperiodic monotile would be found. And it already has been, even more recently than that discovery, just about two weeks before the date that this episode's going to be released, a better, more improved aperiodic monotile, in fact, a whole family of them, has been discovered. And when that news came out, I realized, all right, I'm definitely going to make an episode about these aperiodic monotiles and about some of the interesting interesting history that led up to those discoveries. Now, aperiodic monotiles are a certain sort of shape that has a particular trait when it tiles a plane. So what does it mean to tile a plane? Well, a tiling across a 2D plane is a collection of little shapes that we can call tiles stuck together in a way that leaves no gaps and could be continued infinitely, never hitting a gap. We can even have more than one type of tile in some tilings. We could have a collection of being able to use those two types of tile, for example. And certain collections of tiles will have the ability to tile the plane without gaps. Now, these shapes are going to be pretty easy to tile the plane with, but it's not possible with all shapes. If I tried to do it with regular pentagons, there's no way of sticking regular pentagons side by side without leaving some gaps. So the monotile part of this title just refers to having a single tile and an infinite amount of copies of it, as opposed to a collection of different tiles. If we ever tile with a monotile, we'll just have the same shape copied a bunch of times. So what about the aperiodic part of this title? Well, first let's look at what it means to be a periodic tiling. Many tilings I could create, whether it's out of one tile or out of a collection of a few different tiles, have the property where if you look down to the side of them, up, down, left, or right, you'll encounter copies of the same thing you saw before. And we could note that if I took a little chunk of my square graph and slid it over, there would be times where it lined up exactly on where another square already had been in that tiling. I could even do that with four squares at a time. If I slid these all over, they would line up on where another four had been. And on a square grid with them perfectly touching four per vertice like that, I could do that with an arbitrarily large chunk, a chunk of this tiling bigger than any finite number you could pick could be slid over and line up exactly with other sections of where the tiles were. Even if we put a glitch into our tiling, like including one of that tile and the rest are squares touching four per vertice, we would have in that case an arbitrarily large chunk on this side of the glitch or on that side that could be slid over to line up exactly with where other tiles already had been. 
And that's how we can define a periodic tiling, a tiling where an arbitrarily large chunk of it can be slid over to hit a copy. Often, with shapes like these squares here, there are ways to make them into a periodic tiling and ways we could make them into an aperiodic or not periodic tiling. And one example would be if I took the infinitely long columns, or you could call them rows, of squares and distanced them by some power of pi. Like this one was pi units up, that was pi squared units up, this is pi cubed units up. I wouldn't be able to slide these chunks over and hit copies of itself. So a square can make periodic tilings and aperiodic tilings, but it's not what we call an aperiodic tile. To be an aperiodic tile or set of tiles, the shape or shapes must be able to tile the plane, but have no possible ways of tiling it periodically. Every way that they can possibly tile the plane must be aperiodic. So, this square here is not an aperiodic monotile, although it can make certain aperiodic tilings because there are ways to make it into a periodic tiling too. As recently as 80 years ago, it was unknown whether it was even possible to have an aperiodic tile or set of tiles, or whether any tile that can tile the plane must have some ways of doing it periodically. But then in the 1960s, mathematicians began to prove certain sets of tiles had this aperiodic property where they could tile the plane, but the only possible ways to do it were aperiodic tilings. And the first set of tiles proven to be aperiodic had more than 20,000 tiles in it. But mathematicians continued to find smaller sets of tiles that they proved were aperiodic, building up to a big discovery in the 1970s called Penrose tiles. The first time that a set of tiles with just two different tiles in it was proved to be aperiodic. There are various sets of tiles that form what are known as Penrose tilings. And the first time a set with just two tiles that could do this was discovered involved a shape nicknamed the Kite and a shape nicknamed the Dart. And there were also some matching rules, as they were called, where you weren't allowed to put the shapes together in every way. It was as if they had colors on parts of them that had to line up with other other similarly colored parts. And if you did follow the matching rules, these two tiles, as well as some other sets that were discovered not long after, such as one involving two rhombuses, can only tile the plane aperiodically, in a way that has a pentagonal structure, sort of sneaking in those pentagons that we were unable to tile the plane with in a monotile fashion. And because pentagons have the golden ratio within many of their angles and lengths, there are golden ratios hiding all over these Penrose tilings. However, it wasn't the end of the quest for aperiodic tilings because not only did these have to follow matching rules, otherwise you could turn them into something periodic, but it was also two tiles, not a mono tile. And it took many years of mathematicians looking for an aperiodic monotile, sometimes making progress, like with this weird shape that was discovered, that can tile the plane in an aperiodic fashion only, but it's kind of sketchy considering it a monotile because parts of it are separated. And so the quest continued and mathematicians could not find a single aperiodic monotile for many years until recently. Last year in 2022, a guy named David Smith, who I've seen many sources call a hobbyist mathematician because he hadn't been publishing academic papers in this field, he just liked playing around with shapes, ended up finding that this particular 
configuration of little kites, copies of a little kite shape that could form equilateral triangles or hexagons, but in this particular shape that he nicknamed the hat, seemed to have that aperiodic property, as long as you allowed some of the copies of it to include itself flipped, its reflection. This shape, along with its reflection, seemed to be able to tile the plane, but only in aperiodic ways. And with the help of some other mathematicians, it was published in 2023 that this shape, with its flipped copy, were aperiodic tiles. However, some people argued that an aperiodic mono tile still hadn't been found because that hat shape can only tile the plane without any gaps if you allow copies of it that aren't just slid and rotated, but also the flipped copy of it, its mirror image. And like these L shapes here, the flipped copy of the hat is a shape we can't reach just by spinning and sliding it. We have to introduce the ability to do a reflection of sorts. And some people argued that if we're using a tile and its reflection, and that reflection couldn't have been gotten just by rotating and sliding the tile, that we should call that two tiles in the set, and that this really was just an aperiodic set of two tiles, and we still hadn't found an aperiodic mono tile. And if I had made this episode one month ago, that would have pretty much been the end. Me saying, well, maybe someday in the future we will find that improved aperiodic monotile that doesn't require flipping. But it didn't take very long. Just about two months after this hat shape was revealed to the public, the same mathematicians published new findings showing that they had gone further and fixed that issue of their shape requiring reflections. They had proven that other shapes, if you forbid reflections from occurring, did have that same aperiodic monotile property, and by bending the edges of those shapes in particular ways, they created an infinite family of shapes that they nicknamed specters that had the best of all worlds and could tile only aperiodically whether or or not you allowed reflections. These specter shapes would be harder for me to cut out, but here are some visuals that the original authors used in their paper to demonstrate what these shapes are like and how the patterns they form on a bigger scale can't be periodic. What I love about these discoveries is that they involve relatively simple shapes and relatively easy to describe questions, but questions that were unsolved for many years before the right mix of math and creativity finally proved that there was an aperiodic monotile and then quickly proved a lot more cool things about those monotiles. But there's still many open questions about the general patterns of which sets of tiles are aperiodic. Who knows what they'll discover about tilings next. All right, thanks for joining me here in combo class to learn about some new mathematical discoveries about shapes. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode.